Hi, I'm Matt Hill. I'm the curriculum designer here, working our way through the revamped supply and demand. We are on day four. The supply curve shifts. Um, so here we'll be covering when the supply curve shifts. Again, we start by trying to get the students in the head of a supplier. So we say, all right, you got to go home. You got to make a batch of cookies, 10 cookies. Um, you're going to bring them to class to sell tomorrow. What's the lowest price you would take for each cookie? Basically, what you know, what's what's your price? You know, to go and do this task, what price would you need to have to make it worth your while? All the students write down their price, and then you go to the class and you say, "All right, let's take everyone's price. If I was buying the cookies at twenty-five cents, how many of you would sell?" Certain number of the students may have that a price that low. You write down the quantity sold. At 50 cents, how many would sell? Now, again, you got to include the 25 cent people. So if, if they would sell for 25 cents, they would certainly sell for 50 cents. Add whoever, you know, or whoever else was willing to sell at 50 cents, a dollar, and so on. And basically, you are building a class supply curve for cookies. You can have some students that would, would be willing to do this task for a lower price, some students that would need a higher price to make it worth their while. This will follow the uh, law of supply because, you know, as long as you have variation in price, you know, that supply curve will slope upward. You know, somebody who's going to sell it at 25 cents is, of course, going to sell it at $2. And that is some retrieval practice, you know, for the law of supply. And you want to remind, again, this is sometimes hard for people to understand. And uh, in my experience, even me, to, to figure out why why is the supply curve slope upward? You know, why as the price goes up, they want to make more. Um, and the reason for that is we have different sellers with different cost points. Some sellers are willing to sell at higher prices. Some uh, sellers are willing to sell at lower prices. And so we saw that in the class. There's some, some sellers that would say, yeah, you know, 25 cents, I'm good. I'll take that. You know, those would be the low cost sellers, the sellers that... You know, essentially saying, yeah, wait, I can make money at a low price. They're still in the market when the price goes up. We've just drawn other sellers into the market. Now, the other reason why the supply uh, curve is going to slope upward is those low cost sellers, as they produce more and more and more, as the price goes up, as they're saying, oh, well, I'll, I'll produce more, I'll produce more. Eventually, their costs are going to go up. You know, the more cookies you make, you know, that's going to, there's going to be some opportunity cost there with, you know, you got to store some stuff in your house. You maybe got to pay somebody to help you out. And so your costs do rise as you're, you're producing uh, more. At some point, your costs will start to rise. Students may sort of have a factory in mind and all right, isn't it just like, you just run the factory longer. At some point, you're going to run into capacity constraints and your costs will rise. That's another reason why the supply curve slopes upward. And ultimately, the supply curve is representing cost, technically a marginal cost, but it's basically the supply curve is cost. Those points on the supply curve represent a seller's cost for producing that unit. So we're sort of getting into the inside of what is the supply curve. And then we're going to think, what might move that supply curve? And we have these questions. If the ingredients became cheaper, um, would the lowest price you'd be willing to sell, would that increase or decrease? They wrote down the lowest price they would sell these cookies for. Would that change? And how would that change if all of a sudden it's cheaper to make cookies, the ingredients go down? What if the government taxed cookies? Would that increase or decrease your lowest price willing to sell? If you had a robot that just made the cookies for you, how would that change your lowest price? These are the sort of the correct answers. And what we're getting at is these are the supply curve shifters. The cost of ingredients, input prices, that's going to move the curve, going to change your costs. And ultimately, the low, the lowest price you sell is, is your cost. That is the lowest you would go is your cost for, um, for making those cookies. Taxes, obviously, are going to affect your, um, your, your costs. And then also technology. If I got a robot, that's nice. And so I've already sort of said what is on this slide. The low, lowest price you would sell is basically your cost. That is your cost. That's the lowest you would you would sell that cookie for. Okay, and it's a combination of the ingredients and your opportunity cost, the value of your time. And so things that change that cost will shift the supply curve. The supply curve basically represents the relationship between price and quantity in a moment of in time. As things change, as the fundamentals of supply change, which is going to be related to cost, that curve will shift. Just like with the demand curve, the demand curve represents the relationship between price and quantity at a moment in time. 
as the fundamentals change, as people's tastes change, as the number of buyers change, ultimately that curve shifts. All right, so an increase in supply is when the curve shifts out. And so at any given price, suppliers are willing to supply more. That's why it's called an increase in supply. At any given price, they're willing to supply more. Now, this can be very confusing because, wait, hold on, the supply curve is going down. Like, if we look at it vertically, it's going down. Yeah, that's accurate to say. Um, and it's because the costs have been lower. If suppliers' costs go down at any given price, they can supply more. And since the supply curve represents cost, yeah, you could look at it as costs going down. And so it looks like it's going down. But ultimately, we think about this as an increase in supply because at any given price, suppliers can now supply more. Okay. A decrease in supply is when the curve shifts back. Again, if we think about this vertically, that's because the costs have gone up. All right. So our supply shifters, the things related specifically to cost, are going to be productivity, like new technology. That was the robot. Input prices. This is, you know, your cost of ingredients. And then taxes and subsidies, things that the government might do to make your costs go up or down. we got a nice little acronym here, PIT, um, to help students remember that. Now we have other supply shifters. These are related to those other supply shifters. If there's more students in the class, would the amount of cookies supplied at any given price go up or down? If the expected price of cookies doubles next week, if you expect it to double next week, how is that going to affect you, your willingness to supply um, today? Okay, And so if there are more people in the class, that means the supply will increase at any given price. If you expect cookies to be more expensive in the future, you're likely going to produce less today or uh, increase your, uh, your lowest price today because, hey, you want to hold some ingredients back or when that price is higher. So we had to add these two other shifters, the sellers, the number of sellers in the market, and expectations. Always got that pesky expectations in there. Okay, again, we have a table where the students are get an event and have to figure out, is this going to increase supply? Is it going to decrease supply? And then which one of those supply shifters is it related to? And then we have another one of these interactives where students have to say, just like on the demand side, is this a change that is going to move us along an existing supply curve? So a change in the own price, the change in the price of the good itself is going to move you know, us along the curve if we have a change in one of the fundamentals of a supply, one of those sh a shift in the cost or the number of sellers or expectations, that's going to move the curve itself. So here we have a subsidy that's going to increase the supply. Okay. All right. This is going to decrease the supply. Anyways, we have um, uh, those, that interactive for students to practice. And then lastly, just an exit ticket to check understanding and how well they are, you know, some, some metacognition where they're asking how well they understand this concept. Get our supply, demand, and equilibrium unit plan here, or click for the next video.